so one thing I wanted to uh, make clear is uh, this uh, uh, you know uh, one of the misconceptions here is also who were the Indo-Europeans what are their origins and where they originated from and who were the Aryans so you know I want to clarify those things in this video because there seem to be a lot of mistakes here and uh, I would just like to clarify who the Indo-Europeans were, who the Aryans were and who the uh, Indo-Iranians were as well. So let me begin. So one thing I wanted to make clear here is that uh, you know there's a misconception and uh, the reality is which I wanted to clarify is that yes uh, the original Proto-Indo-Europeans were more or less European. Uh, including the Yamnaya people, although they were a bit more influenced by uh, Iranian genes, they were nonetheless uh, European and uh, clustered with uh, modern day Europeans to a lesser extent. But the uh, ancestors of the Indo Iranians, the Sintashta people, cluster more so with the uh, modern day Northern Europeans, are, although the similarity is around 70 to 80 percent perhaps even as low as uh, 60%. So not a 100% match, but yes, um, the original the original point of the Indo-Iranians, the uh, uh, Sintashta people were uh, more or less European and they did have a uh, Nordic feature. So I just wanted to clarify this before I begin to uh, get any um, you know any misconceptions out of the way of who these people initially were. Now knowing this you may ask then well haven't you said uh, many times that the or like the Iranians were not Europeans or were not Nordic before uh, the arrival of the Arabs or even before that uh, during the Achaemenid period and yes I have said that and I stand by my opinion but uh, in this video I hope to clarify a few things and explain why I said that and how the Iranian genome evolved before it entered into uh, Europe, so into uh, Iran. So I will talk about that now. Okay, so before I talk about the uh, evolution of the Iranian genome uh, from the Indo European genome, the initial European genome, into the present day Iranian genome, I would like to talk a bit about uh, the Neolithic Iranians and the original inhabitants of Iran. So let me begin by talking about them. Around 10,000 years ago emerged the Iranian Neolithic farmers in the Zagros mountains. They were one of the first in the world to grow and cultivate crops and to plant them. And these people would go on to spread into South Asia as well as into Central Asia and form minor cultures there. Uh, uh, sorry, in uh, Central Asia their cultures were pretty minor but in South Asia they founded the Indo the Indus Valley civilization which was one of the first uh, great civilizations of the world and that was founded by these Neolithic farmers and today uh, Pakistanis actually have the most Neolithic farmer ancestry from any ethnicity out there. Around uh, 4000 years ago uh, my uh, farmers from uh, Anatolia the early Anatolian farmers who would later go on to migrate to Europe and become the early European farmers after mixing with the native hunter-gatherers also migrated to Iran and mixed with the native Iranian um, uh, Neolithic Iranians and uh, through this mixture they formed the Chalcolithic Iranians and these people are the people who modern day Iranians derive the majority of their ancestry. So then you may ask who were the Indo-Europeans and what were their origins and the Indo-Iranians as well. Well, I am going to talk about that right now and you know what I say it may offend some people but I hope uh, you understand my point. The original uh, Indo-Europeans were a mix of the Yamnaya people, were a mix of uh, Caucasus hunter-gatherers, so an Iran-like population and um, Eastern European hunter-gatherers or uh, as they're better known also you could say uh, Nordic hunter-gatherers, Scandinavian hunter-gatherers although they were a bit distinct from them so I think Eastern European hunter-gatherers is the better term in a modern sense but they weren't that different from the Scandinavian hunter-gatherers. These uh, Yamnaya people then migrated into Europe and mixed more with the uh, uh, first for the first time actually mixed with the native uh, the European farmers 
the early European farmers, which had arrived originally from Anatolia, as you remember, and mixed with the native European hunter-gatherers. So they mix, you know, from this mixture emerged the corded ware culture. And this called the corded ware culture is actually the predecessor of uh, many Indo-European cultures. And this is actually where the Proto-Indo-European languages emerged. Then these people, uh, the uh, from these people from the Corded Ware culture, as well as uh, minor influence from the Yamnaya, although it's not clear, it's more likely just the Corded Ware culture, which gave birth to uh, the Central Asian uh, Indo-Iranian speaking populations or the Proto-Indo-Iranian speaking population. Then uh, the primary of these are obviously the Sintashta and its uh, predecessor, the Andronovo cultures. But uh, I, the real uh, Proto-Indo-European one in this case was, I mean Proto-Indo-Iranian one in this case was the Sintashta people who were very much uh, European-like, you know, they had Nordic features and uh, they were very much resembling uh, present-day Northern Europeans, quite frankly. Oh, sorry, I meant actually the... Uh, Andronovo culture was preceded by the Sintashta culture, so not the other way around. Sintashta came first and it was followed by the Andronovo, and at this point they were still pretty much uh, Nordic, you know. They may not have had some of the Nordic features, but they were nonetheless genetically similar to uh, Northern European populations today. This is undeniable, and you'll see how they played a role in the shaping of the modern day Iranian people and how they were actually the. Uh, progenitors of uh, the Iranian languages. Well, at this point, you may be wondering, uh, you know, what are you talking about? I thought you said that the uh, Iranians uh, were not Nordic, but, uh, you know, uh, actually, uh, I am going to get into that uh, right now, so I hope uh, you understand what I am saying here. Now, just as the uh, Indo-Europeans mixed with the native farmers in uh, Europe when they uh, encountered the peoples, uh, uh, the um, native uh, farmers in uh, Central Europe and the peoples of the Corded Ware culture, which uh, they would go on to influence in a similar manner, they encountered the uh, native farmers of uh, the native Neolithic Iranian farmers in uh, Central Asia in the BMAC and Yaz cultures. And these people would go on to influence the Indo-Europeans and uh, this would lead to the uh, modern uh, the uh, Iranian population we know today. Actually, I wanted to note that uh, there were many cultures which impacted the languages of Europe, but the main one was the Corded Ware culture, which is believed to be the uh, ancestor of uh, the Proto-Slavic I mean, sorry, Proto-Baltic languages as well as the Proto-Germanic languages and the Proto-Indo-Iranian languages. Now I will get into depth uh, right now. So these uh, Proto-Indo-Iranian people continue the traveling eastward and then slowly and steadily they began uh, infiltrating the BMAC and Yaz cultures were, which were Neolithic Iranian cultures built by the early farmers I had mentioned previously and you know while infiltrating these cultures, they adopted a lot from them and actually we see BMAC and Yaz influence on the Iranian languages, it is believed, the Indo-Iranian languages. It is believed that the BMAC culture influenced the languages of uh, South Asia and uh, the um, uh, Yaz culture influenced the languages of uh, uh, Iran and the Indo-Iranian, uh, I mean the Iranian languages. So I will get into depth on uh, how these uh, Yaz people were like and how we know that they uh, preceded the uh, Iranian civilizations. Actually, it was within the Yaz culture that the Western language actually developed and by that time, these heavily Yaz the um, Iranians migrated to Iran, they were, so the Persians, the Kurds and the Medes, they were already heavily influenced by Neolithic Iranian genes, perhaps as high as 50%. So they had half of their ancestry from the original Indo-Europeans and the other half, well, the Proto-Indo-Europeans and the other half from these Neolithic Yaz peoples. And actually, uh, the evidence here is that within the Yaz culture, uh, the people, the original people, resemble the, the, those uh, Neolithic Iranians, but they mix with these Indo-Europeans. So then from this uh, Yaz uh, one culture, the 
uh, there was a split and uh, the original, uh, the Western Iranic speakers migrated to Iran at this point around 1000 BC and those who remain became the Eastern Iranic speakers. So the ancestors of the Bactrians, Sogdians and uh, as well as the Aryans. So this Yazdu culture actually uh, corresponds with Aryanam Vaija, the homeland of the Aryans or the Indo-Iranians and actually uh, well, the Iranian branch of the Indo-Iranians and actually, uh, you know, this area would remain quite populated and I will get into that uh, right now. So basically, the Yaztu culture can also be, uh, it's also attributed to the location of the mythical Kayanian dynasty, which means that it could have likely existed in this location based on the settlements we have seen. From the archaeology here and uh, there were many other uh, inhabitants here later on including the Margia Margians who were later killed by Darius the Great in his great expedition to Margiana in the 6th century BCE the Murgab oasis also known as Yazdape was uh, deserted the reason for this likely was the revolt of Frada in 521 BC and this corresponded with the conquest of Bactria by Darius the Great. And during this period, uh, Darius the Great actually managed to uh, conquer this region. He killed uh, 54,243 Margians and uh, 6,972 were taken prisoner. And this ended the Yaz II culture. And then after this, for a short period, there was also the Yaz III culture, but it eventually uh, ended up disintegrating into uh, many small, uh, it uh, disintegrated until the uh, emergence of the uh, Parthians, who are believed to have been the final remnants of this last uh, culture. These Yaz Iranians most likely resembled modern day uh, Yagnobi peoples, who are the direct descendants of the Sogdians as well as the Pamiri Tajik. So this was before they entered Iran. This is how uh, the Persians likely would have been before they entered Iran, as well as the Kurds, I mean the Medes. So this was the point where actually the distinction between Eastern Iranian and Western Iranian was set. The Eastern Iranians being more Iran Neolithic and more uh, um, step derived than the Western Iranians who were more Iran Calcolithic like and uh, because of their obvious uh, considerable Anatolian Anatolian uh, uh, ancestry from Neolithic An Anatolia and uh, this uh, separation actually had a huge impact because the Western Iranians ended up evolving quite differently than the Eastern Iranians. Another thing I will add is that by this point, this Sarmatian sample probably also gained a bit more European DNA and hence why it does not uh, cluster that closely with the, uh, uh, a bit uh, less closely with the modern day uh, Eastern Iranians. But I am certain that uh, the uh, Sarmatians who entered into Europe was were a bit less uh, European shifted and more so Iran and West Asian shifted. It was actually the, during the period of the BMAC and Yazd influences that the um, Eastern Indo-Europeans, so this Eastern branch of Indo-Europeans developed the Aryan identity. So because of this, um, the uh, Europeans cannot really claim our Aryan identity because it developed distinct and when it developed uh, the uh, Indo-Europeans were already admixed with uh, the natives so they were around 50% steppe and 50% uh, uh, Neolithic Iranian and this is what uh, many uh, European nationalists do not understand is that the term Aryan was not used in any great degree by the uh, Europeans, it was mostly an Eastern Indo-European thing. The Elamites were likely heavily uh, Iran Calcolithic derived and at this point what you see is uh, more mingling with the natives on part of the Western Iranians until the majority were completely admixed. Uh, so initially they were a Neolithic Iran and Steppe admixture and they became more admixed with the Calcolithic Iranians later on. And basically what happened at this point was that uh, the Persian Empire rose in uh, 550 BCE at which point they were very different people. 
and I believe that although the ruler Sodarush and uh, Kurush maintained significant uh, step ancestry, they were still uh, very much same to the their subjects, perhaps uh, just a bit more step ancestry, so as high as 40 and uh, 45 percent, I would say, but nonetheless, they were more Iran like than any other population at the time. And by the Sassanids, this, this distinction completely disappeared. Although I would say that the Parthians were still around 50% uh, step derived, hence why uh, Eastern Iranians were much fairer than Western Iranians, which ma with many having blue eyes actually, but uh, this is despite the fact that they were half uh, Neolithic Iran derived. Actually, you can see a bit more uh, finer uh, facial features in the case of Dariush in his depictions uh, despite this. So, actually, this leads me to believe that he was a bit more step derived than the uh, native populations. But nonetheless, you can see that he still uh, largely resembles his subjects and his guards who were, of course, of uh, elite stock, as were the immortals and they're displayed with the... Uh, the brown skin so tan skin like modern iranians so to conclude although the proto-indo-europeans were largely of european stock by the time they got to iran they were considerably admixed with uh, the neolithic iranians as well as uh, the calcolithic iranians once they entered iran and uh, to prove this we actually have a sample from the calcolithic as well as the uh, a sample from uh, the Iron Age, so around uh, 900 BCE, and uh, the sample clearly uh, clusters with the modern day Iranians, and it's from uh, actually Tape Hassanlu, which was a Hurrian site, so it was just another one of the Indo Iranian tribes which migrated to Iran, and the sample. Uh, resemble the modern uh, modern Kurds the most because of regional variations but uh, still so this would mean that the ancient Persians were likely most similar to uh, Iranians from uh, Fars province most likely with uh, also affinity to the uh, modern day Kurds as well but uh, more or less the Kurds are actually descended from the Medes and so are the Azeris whereas uh, the people of the Fars province are most likely uh, the descendants of the original Persian tribes which migrated there. So I hope this video clarified a few misconceptions and remember uh, you can debate me in the comments but please be courteous and don't insult another commenter. Remember to be respectful and uh, I will uh, uh, ban you if you uh, post uh, continuously troll or uh, act rudely to the other members on this uh, on my channel thank you and uh, take care i will hopefully uh, make another video later on and now i am getting new technology so i will be able to make uh, much better uh, content uh, content